people I went to high school with, people I went to elementary school with, don't think just because you hear prophecies I'm giving, that's all there is. No, there are prophecies that God gives me for people in my real life, um, people at work <laughs> that are not going to ever make it onto this channel because it's not for anyone. What you see here is for the body of Christ. And it's the th same thing with Sister Celestial. I shared with you all before, Sister Celestial is a prophetess of the Lord. And you don't have to take my word for it. Quite frankly, I don't care because some people don't even listen to me. <laughs> so people don't even listen to me. So I don't know, you know, it is what it is. But so, one thing you'll realize, um, or maybe you won't, maybe you won't. I had to come into this understanding. God lifts up people for a purpose. And though all the people who he calls to the office of prophet or prophetess, that's for women, speak the same type of things like judgment, all this stuff, all this stuff. Many times God gives people certain scopes. I've said this before. And I had to realize that because at some point I was like, Lord, I'm, I'm quite uncomfortable because I'm getting a lot of words for celebrities and I don't care about it any of them i'm not trying to be rude i'm not trying to sound heartless i don't care i don't watch tabloids i don't watch tv so why am i getting messages about erica mena i who i don't care right but god cares god cares about their lives and god wants them to repent and sister celestial is someone who god has called into the realm the scope of judgment specifically end times and so I think what we have right now in the body of Christ, and I've shared this many times, is way too many of us are, are placing our own understanding on how God does things. <laughs> we shouldn't do that, so brother, we shouldn't do that. Um, and it's, it's so sad to me because I hear people say, like Brother JC, I think I saw your comment. I don't know if you're a man or a woman. I don't know if you're still here. I hope you are because y'all was going back and forth for a minute. So now I'm, I'm, I'm addressing it. And I'm not trying to castigate you. I'm not trying to persecute you in any way. But um, we be giving our two cents. <laughs> I don't know why we like to give our two cents. Listen, when I came across Sister Celestial, the crazy thing is the first prophecy I heard from her was um i don't know the name of it i can't tell you what the name of it was but she was talking about the children underground in dc who are being used for rituals and when i heard it i was like yep she knows god showed it to her uh because not too long before then i think a year before then god has shown it to me i was driving through dc with my um my brother one day holy spirit brought my eyes to the right and I saw this place called like atomic pizza and I was like what in the world is that and I didn't know why like Holy Spirit just brought my eyes there tell me why it was like that same place in the pizza gate thing child so God was making it very clear that stuff is real that stuff is very real um, with the children the child trafficking sex magic all of it it's real and so when I heard sister celestial saying the prophecy I was like wow mm. It's true. And I took her up to God because I shared with you guys before how before I came on this app, God told me, when you pray, when you prophesy, cover your head. Um, and when I got on this app, I didn't know it was a thing. Look back at my old, my very first, well, the first prophecy I posted was the um, New York Tidal Wave, but that one has, has been taken down. But the first prophecy I gave with my face in it, my hair is covered. I didn't know about Sister Celestia until last year, October, when a brother told me to listen to her page. Um, se late September, sorry. And so when I came across Sister Celestia, I'd already been through false prophetesses. And I was like, <laughs> okay, Lord, she says, she's saying the truth, but I don't know her. Lord, do you know her? And so God was like, I know her. That's my daughter. I sent her out. I was like, Father, thank you. <laughs> now, it's crazy to me because when I listen to Sister Celestial, I don't know about y'all, but I be hearing hope. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Everyone's different. When I hear her, I hear hope. Crazy thing is that when I hear her, I, I hear her personality. I hear that she's actually low-key kind of goofy a little bit like me. Like, that's what God be showing me. But at the same time, I'm also hearing the rebuke. I'm hearing the messages. I'm hearing the warning. Whenever I listen to any brother or sister who God has called, when I listen to Sister Monique, 
Um, that's I speak the heart of God. When I listen to Sister Rhonda, that's the worshipers retreat. When I hear these sisters speak, I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lord, you know, if there be anything in me, as I'm listening to them and I'm agreeing with them, I'm like, Lord, let me not just be someone who's like, mm-hmm, you saying it. Let me make sure I'm not in the docket. This isn't applicable to me. Sister Celestial has a whole page um, that Brother Barry told me about, Revivale, Celestial Revivale, or something like that, where she is just speaking as a regular sister and she's encouraging. So this whole thing when people are like Celestial is doing fear. Listen, I don't usually defend myself, but who I will defend are my brothers and sisters, true brothers and sisters, each and every time. You're going to see me in the comments <laughs> fighting because listen, I just, I, 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 I really don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't get it. I can understand how you can hear words like America's mystery Babylon, she's going to be destroyed. And you're like, what, <laughs> what, what you mean this country, you know, and I can understand how that makes people fearful. But my thing is, what does the word of God say? God didn't give us a spirit of fear. And so if someone is telling you, this is what's going to happen, go to your prayer closet, pray to God, right? Come out of sin so that you won't be judged. You shouldn't be afraid. You should be listening to the instruction. But so many people skip over Celestial's instructions and they immediately go to fear. And I don't get that. And it's so sad because this woman is thorough. It's not like she, it's not like Sister Celestial is like a me where I might bring up a point and then I'm like, oh, let me go back to the point. She sits down and she, she prepares the message. She sits with the Lord. She'll prepare the message. She doesn't go on live like I do where I'm just going, you know. And so she's very intentional when she says what she says. She don't mix her words. She doesn't mix the prophecies God gives to her. And it's quite, it's quite sad. The amount of brothers and sisters I've seen say, oh, I listened to Celestial and I felt afraid. If you feel afraid, what are you going to do with the fear? Um, are you going to recognize God didn't give us a spirit of fear? And so if I'm fearful, there might be something in me I need to change and rectify. Or are you like, what is it? There are too many people who are like, oh, Celestial makes me afraid. She makes me afraid. Well, if you're feeling afraid, it's, that's a conviction you're feeling. That's a, I'm not doing things the right way you're feeling. So maybe reconsider what you're doing and ask God to help you. Because so many of you, instead of listening to what Sister Celestial is saying, you're running away from it. where well, you should be listening to it. <laughs> you should be listening to it so that you can make the correction. And when I say, I don't need to come on here to tell people how God has shown me time and time and time and time and time again, personally, that he has called Celestial. I don't need to, I don't need to come on here, but I'll share, I'll share two instances with you all. No, three. I'll share three. Because today is Sabbath. We have time. Today is Sabbath. We got time. Um, okay. So the first one was last year, September. God gave me a series of four messages, instructions for the body of Christ. One of them was the banks. Uh, that the banks will be closing. That you have to make sure you keep only what you need. Now, up until that point, I don't think Celestia had said anything in relation to that, but it was months after the fact that then God gave her the same wording. And even the wording, I was like, oh yeah, this is God's voice to a T. Second thing that happened was I had a dream and the dream deeply concerned me. <laughs> In the dream, and I, I shared it with Brother Barry, I, I messaged him. I wish I had my dream journal on me. But I want to say maybe the dream happened July 4th, July 7th, around that period. I had a dream and I saw Sister Celestial. I should be covering my hair, I'm sorry. It's so rude. Um, sorry about that. So I had a dream. I saw Sister Celestial in it. And she was in a courtroom. And she was she was going back and forth, arguing her case. 
And to those of you who don't know, she's an attorney. But as I watched her arguing her case, she was she was starting to stutter. She couldn't get her words together. It was a mess. I'm not going to hold you. It was a mess. And at some point, she was just like losing. She was straight up losing her court case. And I watched as she went from wearing like a regular outfit to like her cleavage showing. And when I woke up from this dream, I was like, oh, Lord, what does that mean? I didn't know what it meant. And I began to pray. I was like, God, please, like, protect Sister Celestial. Because every minister who I follow, I pray for y'all. Every true minister, at least. Um, and so I remember praying, like, God, what does this mean? Does this mean she's, she's going to go into deception? Like, what does this mean? And I remember I texted my sister, Tracy, my sister in Christ, Tracy. I texted her the dream. And I was like, please pray with me for Sister Celestial. Because I know Sister Tracy loves Sister Celestial. And I didn't want to share with anyone um particularly on this app because i didn't want anyone to not know what god was saying and just run with stuff i want to say maybe three days later three days later sister celestial comes out with a prophecy video this is a dream god gave me and so she starts i'm getting ready for work i'm listening to the message and she starts talking about how she saw herself in a courtroom because she was given um she was given documents and she'd heard that she read in the documents that they wanted to use her dna to make nephilim and as she started saying she took them to court i was like wait a minute what's happening and then she starts talking about the dream and i kid you not i'm in my room freaking out like Oh my God, oh my God, this is the dream God gave me. Why am I hearing the dream God gave me about Celestial right now in this video? She's talking about how she was in the court. She was fighting so that they wouldn't use her DNA. Um, and then she starts losing the case. Like she's unable to express herself well. She's, she's, she's failing, basically. And so she was like, everyone in the courtroom was just kind of looking at her like, duh, duh, duh. and she took a break. The court took a break and she prayed and God, she was praying, God, give me the words. I'm, I'm honestly paraphrasing. She was like, God, give me the words. She goes back into the court and God literally gives her the words. She wins her case. That was her dream. Um, there was more that happened in my dream where I saw her like pleading with, um, I don't know if it was the prosecution. I don't know who he was, but he was a fellow lawyer. And she was like, you know me, you know me. And he was just like, girl, get out of my face. It was just a mess. Like the, her case was just a mess. And so when I heard her dream, I was like, God, whoa, what is what is happening? What were you showing her? So at this point, I'm like fully engaged with this message, even though I'm engaged with every message. So she starts saying that they took her DNA because of who she is. And had she not won her case, they would have used her DNA to make a Nephilim. When Sister Celestial said that, brothers and sisters, I could have I could have urinated on myself then and there because I was I was like, wow. Um because what God has showed me when I saw her cleavage was if she did not win. For a woman to be showing her cleavage, talk less of a woman of God, that's that's disgraceful. And so that was showing, had she not won that case, if God had not intervened, that Nephilim baby would have happened. But there was something Sister Celestial said, and she was like, they wanted her DNA. And I was like, God, oh my God, oh my God. God was showing me through Sister Celestial's prophecy that was applicable to me. Because just like two months ahead of that, my coworker was pressing me to go and get um, an allergy test. I went to go get an allergy test. When I went there, the Holy Spirit started to tell me, take your documents out. Usually when you go to the doctor, you fill out the forms, you hand it in, and then you know the doctor sees you, then you leave. When I went, they gave me the forms, but they told me to take the forms in with me. They didn't really care. But as I was done being observed by the allergist, God was telling me very clearly, take your documents and go. And so <laughs> imagine my surprise when I heard Sister Celestial's prophecy concerning DNA. And I was like, oh my God, you were telling me something, Lord. Like these people won't take our DNA. 
And so, yeah, that. Imagine hearing someone's dream before they had the... I had Sister Celestial's dream before she had the dream is what I'm trying to say. She shared when she had the dream and it was after God sent me the same message. And I was like, yo, God, you're different. And so instances like that where God is confirming a word through her, it's, it's, it's very unsettling, very quite unsettling, very quite unsettling. Um, so I don't, I don't. I don't understand how you guys really sit down and you go before Lord com concerning people and he's not showing you who he has called. Third thing was years, years ago, um, my, my pastor had came to my house before he became my pastor. He came to my house. He had come to my house. He had come to my house. He, he came to my house. Sorry. Present past participle, all of them. But my pastor came to my house and he was, um, praying uh he was praying for all of us and god gave him a message he's he's also a prophet god gave him a message for me and it was a very particular message i personally don't feel like sharing it because it ain't nobody business <laughs> but he was saying something about me that god was showing him about the future about how people would come to me and i would teach them certain things and the way he worded it, I was like, that's quite interesting. Okay. Now, when I came across Sister Celestial, a year later, after I heard her message concerning the little boys underground in DC, Holy Spirit took me to one of her messages. And if you ask me what the name of the message is, I don't know, I don't remember. I can't tell you it. I don't remember it. But in the message, in the video, she was saying how she was sitting in a rock. And every single day in the morning and afternoon, people would come. And she would be teaching them. And she would be teaching them. And then at night, the rock would engulf and hide her. And when she said that, I... I had a very sinking feeling in my stomach because what she was saying again was what my, my pastor had said to me. And what made it worse is that, it's not worse, but what made it worse is that she didn't say it in the video, but I knew in my spirit what she was saying. She didn't say it in the video but I knew in my spirit who she was and what work God called her to outside of prophet. And I realized, oh my God, <laughs> I know who this woman is. Um, and I know the work he has called her for. Even after all this, all this you see on, on YouTube, all this ends. I know the work he has called her for. And so I get very, whew, I, I get very concerned for brothers and sisters who are hammering home this belief that Sister Celestial is not a woman of God. Oh, I, I believe, hmm, I don't know. Um, I feel I be feeling bad for y'all for real. I don't know. Y'all better. Y'all better. My thing is this. Okay, even if you don't know if someone is a man or woman of God, before before making a comment like I don't know about this person, I think it's best to go to God. You know what I'm saying? It's just best. Like before you say, "Well, this person is a prophet," I think you should just kind of hold off and like go to God, right? Like the other day. There was a man on here who was like, he's the last of the apostles. <laughs> Sorry. Avatar last airbender. He said, I'm the last of the apostles. Only 10 exist. I'm the last one. And I was like, you know what? Instead of me giving my two cents, let me go to God. <laughs> last apostle? You the last one? Okay. God. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's not giving that it sounds right, but I was like, Lord, let me just make sure now. Cause I don't want to come and start saying you not a, 
we're too used to giving our two cents and you know what our minds can feel like okay i know what i'm talking about i'm 100 percent right about this but you could be like very wrong right you could be so wrong and what if you're wrong what if you're wrong and you've spent all this time saying this person is a lie sister celestial is indeed a woman of god like she is actually a prophetess of the lord so this isn't even a thing of what if those of you who are saying she's not a prophetess of the lord you're wrong <laughs> you're wrong and it's so bad because instead of you now listening to this woman and she's telling you okay here's the playlist i have a whole playlist of videos for repentance you don't know how to repent here's how to repent according to the word of god now, am I saying she's a perfect person? I'm not saying she's a perfect person. We're all works in progress. Some of us are further along than others. That's the reality. Some of us are further along. <laughs> Some of us never went through that stage of, oh, I'm deceived. Sister Celestia grew up in the church. She was blessed. She said it herself. She never went through those false teachers that a lot of us went through. <laughs> so she wasn't in the ghetto, right? She was in the, she was in the good parts. Whereas many of us were in the ghetto. <laughs> so it took a lot of us a little longer. And some of us are still, you know, being refined and reshaped and all this stuff. Um, and so when you see someone who is more mature in Christ, I feel like sometimes it may make people feel intimidated. When you see someone who is further along in Christ, further along in their walk, they're not a babe is what I mean. You know, Sometimes people may hear their words and they're like, you're, you're, it's giving judgment. <laughs> it's giving fear mongering. Whereas like, no, it's not fear mongering. She's literally just telling you the mind of God. And I think one thing we have to understand is that God gives us all personalities for a reason. Like the way we are is for a reason. God gave Sister C Celestial a certain type of um, demeanor. The way she delivers her prophecy is not for her to be a best friend. It's for her to give a message. And all of her message, the staunch majority of her messages are judgment. And to, the, to those who know, she'll say some things and you're like, oh. <laughs> so there's, there's some things Sister Celeste will say. You're like, oh, sister. I know. I know what you're saying. Right? Um, it's not for you to feel good. It's for you to know, hey, this is happening. If a war is coming and somebody comes out with a whole jamboree uh, live band, the war is coming. Y'all better get ready. You're not going to take it seriously. You're going to be like, yeah, the war. Come on. Let's go. Let's dance. No, she's not here to entertain you. What is going on? She's here to warn you. Like people are going to die. People are going to perish. <laughs> what, what is happening? What is happening? I saw I saw a man, I saw a brother who was like, oh, well, she just seems as though God, she makes it seem like God is this bloodthirsty, maniacal God who's ready to destroy people. Can y'all go and read Obadiah? Go and read Obadiah. <laughs> what is happening? God said, you ain't going to escape my wrath. If you jump into the sea, I'm going to send the sea serpent to bite you. Are we acting like we don't read the Bible? What are we, what are we, what is happening? She makes God seem like this. Y'all better go and write, read the Bible to learn about God because it seems as though some of y'all aren't reading the Bible. That's why you don't know about God. That's why you don't know about God. There are people God won't forgive. Yes, there are people God won't forgive. Go and read your Bible and you'll see that. <laughs> what is happening? But people don't want to read their Bibles. People don't want to read their Bibles. And then when they hear Sister Celestial, they're like, no, it's so hateful. So hateful. I'm like, no, not hateful. She's very matter of fact. If anything, her words to me are consolence because... You know, when I hear, when God shows me something and I hear her say the same thing and, and I'm crying to God, like, God, judge, judge. And Sister Celestial comes out like, God is going to judge. I'm like, God, yeah, come on. Like, let's go. <laughs> what is happening? But at the same time, God, mercy, <laughs> mercy upon your children. Mercy upon your children. Mercy upon your church. Even though the church hates the Lord. And so I went on this whole spiel about Sister Celestial. But I love Sister Celestial. I think all of us should continue to pray for her. It's not easy. It's not easy. God knows why he chose her. I couldn't do what Sister Celestial does because I would be like, y'all better y'all better not talk to me. <laughs> y'all better not talk to me. Um, people, people always talk about how Sister Celestial, how she responded to them in the comments. If you had thousands of people 
No, let's be honest. Brothers and sisters, let's be real. I want to be honest with you guys. When God calls you to the office of a prophet, office of a prophetess, the preparation isn't easy. One, because... He will get you used to being rejected by everyone. Family, those you love, those you respect, your friends, lovers. He will get you to a point where you have experienced rejection from everyone. And when I talk about rejection, I'm not just talking about, oh, they just didn't like me for the sake of liking me. After you go through that, God is literally going to bring you through the season where he is giving you a word for them. And they are Christians and you're telling them this is what God said. And they're like, mm -mm, I can't take that. <laughs> nope. Constant rejection. Just so that you don't get used to people saying, yeah, amen, amen. Nah, just expect it in the back of your mind. People are going to be like, girl, if you don't sit down and shut up, <laughs> who are you? What are you talking about? You will get used to saying something, know what you're talking about, and people being like, can you actually shut up? What are you talking about? Like, get out of here. Also, what many don't know is that God will remove any foundation that's not of him. And so all this stuff where you were taught by the world, this is how things are, this is how God will, when I say like this, start breaking it up. The bulk of it will happen before he sends you out. And while you're still in the office, God will still break up more. And so all these debates where people are like, oh, um, are demons real? You know they're real. Is it flat earth or is it a firmament? You know it's a firmament. Speaking in tongues isn't real. You know it's real. <laughs> God gonna show you all that. All those doctrines of men that you held on to, God will remove it. And make you realize that a lot of the stuff you were taught was a lie. It will be sobering. So sobering. Um, for many prophets, specifically those called to the scope of end times, God brings many. Well, not many. <laughs> not many, actually. Because some will harden their hearts. And I get to that point. But God will bring some to Enoch and Esdras. Jasher. Jubilees. It's very lonely. It is not easy. You have very little friends. Even though people love you, people like you, people want to be around you, you have very little friends. Because the minute people get around you, they realize very quickly, it's not a joke. God will show you what they are doing. If they get close to you and they're into sin and deception, God will show you and tell you to speak on it. And very few people like to be corrected, especially when people are in the church and they think they're living right. Very few people in the church like to be corrected and told you're not living right. They don't like the idea that God can show someone what they're doing, that what they're doing, all this is a pretense and they're really not following God the right way. So many people actually separate from you. Now imagine that in your real life, right? She's already said she's an attorney. So attorneys have a certain code of conduct. So she has her regular life. She's a woman of a certain age. Women of a certain age would prefer to be married, right? She has a life. She has a family. And God put her through all of that. And then she has a work. She literally works a nine to five like the rest of us. Attorneys do a lot of reading. They have a lot of cases. She has to deal with that. And on top of that, God gives her messages that are hard. Imagine you go to sleep. You are trying to sleep. You had a long day and you go to sleep and you start to see four or five year olds, six months olds getting raped. And God is saying, this is what happens. Some of you are getting chased by a dog in your dream and you wake up. <gasps> now imagine if God shows you that, how would you react? And then God tells you, go and tell people. I, have you guys ever stopped to think what it looks like? Like when a person has a job, their, their source of income, they have friends, they have family, they're easily found online. And God says, go online and share this word. 
do you know what that comes with? Like, if my job sees this, I could get fired. Like, that's some that's some real stuff. Like, I'm not doing this for a joke. I'm not doing this because I want to do it. And so in her obedience, she has made, she made a blog, writing all that stuff down, all the biblical re references. She has written it down. She's been doing this since 2019 when God called her to do this thing publicly. We're not talking about her private life. We're not talking about the people God has called her to prophesy to that they said, girl, shut up. Or they said yes and they didn't listen, right? We're not talking about any of that. So from 2019, she's been doing this work. Nobody was checking for her when she had her blog. But the minute God called her to YouTube, more people saw. And when you get more people seeing, you get more opinions. And so slowly but surely, here go people giving their two cents Go on YouTube, you will see people making videos. Sister Cel Celestial is not a woman of God. She's a false prophet. This is my, I saw a video. I was looking up, y'all, I was looking up a video for Sister Rhonda. And I started seeing videos about Sister Celestial. And people were, one man said, these are the reasons why I think she might not be a true prophet. I was like, Lord, <laughs> people giving opinion pieces now? These are the reasons why I feel as though, ah, what in the world? The amount of videos that people have made about Sister Celestial, why they think she's false, why they think she's not true. People come on here and ask her, where are your prophecies? <laughs> wow. Imagine if you as a regular person, you know what you're talking about. You're not making it up. You're talking about some real stuff and you've got thousands of people Every single day across every single platform you own TikTok, youtube twitter whatever platform you own people telling you shut up you're a liar people making videos about you how would you feel when you're telling the truth how would you feel would you like it you have a real life you have real work you're trying to do the work of god and you have hundreds of people emailing you what does God have to say about this? I had a dream about snakes. What does that mean? Bro, that's not, that's not what I'm talking about right now. Like, what is happening? Why are you messaging me about your dream about snakes? You know it's bad. Pray. Like, what is happening? This is the stuff that Sister Celestial gets bombarded with. Simply because she's trying to be obedient to the Lord. And then you have Christians, the same people she was sent to, who should be the... The few people who should be understanding what she's talking about being the same people castigating her. True Christian ministry making a whole video about her. I, I dare you to go against the God. Yo, y'all, I don't think people really think about this thing. And I want y'all to know one thing. When God gives you certain messages about certain people, certain things, you get a spiritual attack. A spiritual attack comes with it. And so we're not talking about the regular spiritual attacks that every believer goes through because every believer of Jesus Christ goes through attacks by the enemy. We're talking about specific attacks because of the message God is giving you. But she doesn't come on here to cry, y'all, they, 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 they cuss me out. Oh, the enemy sent demons to my home. She don't talk about that stuff. No one sees that stuff. None of you see it. There's so many brothers and sisters I saw saying, oh, I want to join your prayer call. You wanted to join Sister Celestial's prayer call, not because you wanted to actually pray. You want to be in close proximity to her so you can ask her, what is God telling you about my life? You want her to be your personal prophet. People don't think about that stuff. Nobody, how many people actually sit down and think about this woman's life? The things she's going through for ministry to do the work of God. You hear her and all of a sudden you're like, I just don't like her tone. I wonder how some of your tones would be if you were in her shoes. I actually wonder. I doubt it would be nice. I doubt some of y'all would even be nice if you were in her shoes. After some of you guys go through 10 people, you're already ready to fight. Imagine thousands. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I just, I don't like her tone. I don't like her tone. Then pray that God helps her with her tone if you don't like it. If you don't like her tone, pray. I'm talking about Sister Celestial. I, 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 I just feel like y'all y'all just don't be having love for people. And y'all don't be having no grace. Y'all be looking for a reason, looking for an excuse. 
and y'all are nasty some of y'all i'm not saying all of you i'm not talking about everyone who's listening i'm just saying like wow because i know i could not do what sister celestial does i know i couldn't do it i'm not there <laughs> i'm not there i'm not there i'm not there because the way i would turn off my comments so quickly like y'all better not just talk to me don't talk to me <laughs> Don't talk to me. Comments off, stitches off, duets off until God gets me to a place where I'm like mentally able to deal. Cause I, I in the in the little hundreds of people who be trying to drag me every day, I I, I be like, Lord, <laughs> I be holding myself and I start laughing like, Lord, um, this is ghetto. I don't. <laughs> what is this? Imagine thousands. It's so easy for people to drop their two cents. It's so easy. It's too easy. It's too easy, bro. Like, it's too easy. I couldn't do what she does. I couldn't... I, and God knows it. That's why even the way God shows me these things, he doesn't show me the vulgarity. He censors it for me. He doesn't censor it for her. <laughs> he does not censor it for her. And so, brothers and sisters, I don't know. Um, all I could do is ask you guys to pray for discernment. That's really all I can do. It doesn't mean you will. It doesn't mean anyone will. If I ask, if I ask, you know, when I started giving prophecies, at some point God told me to start saying, test the spirit by the spirit to know if this dream, if this message was from the most high. And so for most of the prophecies I give you, hear me say that. It's not because I want to say that God put it in my heart and made it clear that I should be saying that. I don't need you to test the spirit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had a man say, well, a true prophet in the Bible never told them to test the spirit. And I was like, you don't know me, bro. Like, you don't know me. <laughs> you weren't, you weren't there. <laughs> you weren't there when God told me to do this. Why are you doing this? Like, I be wanting to cry sometimes, bro. Like, sometimes I be wanting to cry, y'all. Because I'm like, you weren't there. Like, if I could project my dreams and visions and I could project these things so you could see they're real, I would do that. But we can't do that. We can't do it. You weren't there when God called Sister Celestial. You weren't there when he told her to say these things. None of us were there. But everybody wants to give an opinion. Well, I just don't think. I just don't think. Uh-uh. Hey, it's bad, you guys. It's very bad, though. It's very bad. I remember when I shared the prophecy where God had shown me years ago, um, I'd seen fallen angels or I saw aliens, sorry. I saw aliens with tentacles and they were pulling down infrastructure in New York. And for so long, I was like, they're fallen angels. Like what in the world? And I remember like hearing a word from Sister Celestial and she was like, those of you who are saying the aliens are fallen angels, they're not fallen angels, they're Nephilim. And I was like, what is she talking about? Like, what does she mean they're Nephilim? But I saw aliens, they have to be fallen angels. And I remember going to God, I was like, God, Celestial said this. Is it true, Lord? And I remember the Holy Spirit was like, daughter, can fallen angels die? And I was like, I mean, if you kill them. <laughs> and he was like, but can they be killed by men? And I was like, no. And he was like, remember what I've been showing you about these aliens? They die. And I was like, okay. And I was like, oh oh okay they're not they're not fallen angels huh <laughs> huh i myself have been corrected through sister celestial and so i just i don't know i think i think sorry for getting nasally i, I think the issue is that people just don't want to take correction people don't want rebuke like i don't know what the issue is i don't know what the issue is um i don't know what's going on with mauricio uh, but again, there's always going to be people who one are late to the party. I guess Mauricio just joined and there are always going to be people who hear a word and they still don't care. Like even in me spending, I think the last 30 minutes talking in defense of sister celestial, there's still going to be someone who's like, well, anyway, she's false, whatever. Listen, I'm going to say this and I'll be done with it. A time is coming. Hmm? I want us to listen very well. A time is coming where we are going to be, some of us, because some of y'all are going to be dead. A time is coming where we will literally be living in every single thing she prophesied. And in those days, <laughs> I 
<laughs> and in those days, a lot of people are going to be shook. And they're going to be like, wait, hold on. What's she saying in that one video? <laughs> no, I'm not saying this to have a gotcha moment. But listen, I tell you guys this all the time. A time is going to come. You will look for me. You will not find me. You're going to look for some of these people who you were making videos about and leaving comments on and making response videos. This is why you're a false prophet. This is why you're a false teacher. You're not going to find these people, though. No, you're not going to find them. <laughs> Everybody's going to be gone. Everybody's going to have to figure it out. Everybody's going to have to have their little, their, their little Bible, their big Bible, and figure it out. Because you didn't want to listen that time, that time. Everybody's going to have to figure it out. Like, there are moments where... God gives me something to say and I don't want to say it. I'm going to be honest. With you, I don't want to say it because I know it sounds absolutely crazy. <laughs> but guess what? In those moments, I remember exactly what God wrote in the word. Do not be dismayed before men lest I dismay you. Don't be, don't be afraid of men. Don't be afraid of being embarrassed by men. Because I will embarrass you in front of them. When God brings that, that to my remembrance, I'll be like, yes, Lord, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And I'm just going to trust. As you told me, I will say it. And so I don't sit here worried about, oh, is a prophecy going to come to pass? I can't worry about it because I, all I can do is say what God showed me or told me to say. It's your little false prophets who be <laughs> who be there looking for has it happened yet? Has it happened yet? Brothers and sisters, I told you before, Sister Celestial is an end times prophet. And we, we're coming up on the end times. And so that means if you're if you're following these people who say, well, you know, all prophets have a uh, have a, a roster. What is it? A roster of fulfilled prophecies. Yeah, of course. Everyone who is called to the office of prophet has prophecies that have come to pass, right? Like, duh. If it's something where God is telling you this is going to happen, yeah, right? But one thing we have to understand is that there are prophecies that are immediate. Like, there are more soon to come. Like, I've had prophecies about people. Um, some, some, when I messaged them, the prophecy was underway and God was telling me of something to come. For other people, when I've given them the word, it was like I was saying rubbish. <laughs> I'm not even trying to laugh. I'll be so honest with you guys. I had a I had a friend. I had a friend. I'm not gonna tell her whole business. I had a friend. We were on a call, and she's she's telling me something, and the Holy Spirit starts giving me a vision, and starts giving me a warning for her. So I give her this warning because I start. I don't want to give her whole business out, but God starts showing me a man, and I was like, avoid him. So she sends me her man, and the man I saw in my vision was not the man I saw. <laughs> Y'all, let me be frank, because I'm not telling her identity. God was telling me to warn her against allowing a man into her house. And the man I saw in this vision, he was tall, he was muscular, caramel colored. Let me be, let me go from the beginning. So basically there was a there's a friend I have sister in Christ and we we're on a call one day I'm so sorry that was so rude I'm so sorry about that you guys I don't know how to really pause sometimes I'm so sorry about that but I really had to talk to that little boy but basically I'm getting a vision and I'm seeing a man who's like tall brolic my color and the Holy Spirit is telling me to warn her don't allow him into your house so as I'm giving her this warning she sends me a picture of her boyfriend and her boyfriend is the exact opposite of God. <laughs> her boyfriend is the exact opposite of who God shows me. I mean, her boyfriend is slim, dark chocolate. And I was just like, okay, Lord. <laughs> I was like, well, the word still stands. The word still stands. And that's what God showed me in this vision. And that's the warning. Do not allow this brown skinned Adonis man into your home. That's it. <laughs> now... When I gave this message, she was like, hmm, okay. Fast forward, her and her, her boyfriend take a break. He asks for a break, they take a break. 
and in in the time where they were taking this break her ex <laughs> her ex is in town and he reaches out to her like hey can i stop by and she messages me and she's like girl um i'm gonna send you a video and i want you to see if that vision of a man you saw if he's in this video so she sends me this video and it's a lot of people it's a it's a party and the camera is panning but i see the man <laughs> and i was like i was like this is him this is the man this is the man and she was like oh my gosh oh my gosh you won't believe it i was like tell me and she was like he he that's my ex he texted me he was trying to come through and i was like praise the lord <laughs> i was like praise the lord god don't miss god don't miss god don't never miss i was like god ain't never gonna make you out here looking crazy y'all hallelujah hallelujah the other day was um with sister monique but god i'm not gonna sell the bit but god gave me a prophecy and i saw and it was for sister monique and i was like it was so left field it was so random but i was like lord i'm just gonna tell sister monique <laughs> And when I told Sister Monique, I was asking her, like, do you know anyone from this place? And she was like, I don't. I don't know anyone from this place. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, Lord, you know. And then God gave the prophecy to her son. I was like, thank you, Father. <laughs> God gave the prophecy to her son, so it made sense. And I was just, Sister Monique, you know what I'm talking about? Because that's how prophecy can be, right? Like... God has given you a message and you're like, I don't, I'm just saying it. I'm just saying it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And you could be out here looking absolutely nuts. I'm pretty sure even when I told you that thing, you were like, girl, <laughs> you're like, Am I, mm, are you sure it's not this person? And I was like, mm -mm, it's this. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, I don't know. I don't know, Lord, you know. I want Monique out here looking at me like I'm a false prophetess. Father, you know what you show me. And then he showed it to your child. I was just like, thank you, Father. And so I say all this to say, man, prophecy comes many different ways. And to those of you who God has called, God is using, man, just speak the word. <laughs> speak the word. Speak the vision. Speak the message. Speak the dream as God has shown it to you. Don't try and make sense of some things. Don't try and make sense of some things because sometimes people, God gives you something and you're trying to make sense of it so you don't seem like you don't know what you're talking about. It's not for you to understand. It's for the person receiving it to understand. Hallelujah. And so please, y'all leave Sister um, Celestial alone. Oh. <laughs> leave Sister Celestial alone. She already gave you all the, the warning. She already gave you the warning that God had given her. For those who like to put their mouths on um, true prophets, that his judgment is coming. Some of y'all going to be walking around with big, beastie, meaty boils. <laughs> Thick boils on your hind parts. Y'all better just please walk with caution. And I'm not saying this to like fear manga, but I'm saying this for us to just practice caution. It's nothing for us to really pause about something before talking. We're just too used to talking all the time and giving our two cents that nobody asks for. Literally, nobody asks us for them. We just be feeling like we got to say something. Everybody want to blog. <laughs> Everyone wants a radio show. Everyone wants to talk and be seen. It's okay. I saw the other day, I gave the prophecy about the Shem. And there was a man on YouTube who was like, Native Americans are not Shem. And I was like... Well, thank you for giving me your two cents I didn't ask for. <laughs> I didn't ask you for your two cents. I didn't ask anyone who I thought who they thought Shem was. I don't ask y'all your opinions unless I ask for your opinions. So uh, listen, when it comes down to even like the, the scattered tribes, what they look like, who they are, I'm not asking folks. <laughs> I'm, I'm relying on God. God knows who's scattered. And so when people are doing this thing, oh, it's not these people. It's not the, you don't know you're not God. That's all I'm trying to say. And so, brothers and sisters, I pray that we are blessed. I pray that we are sanctified. I pray that y'all are enjoying and living up on this Sabbath, being in Christ. I love fellowship with the brethren. God is so good. Um, Sister Lolo said, hell is still taking applications and the bar is low. Listen, hell opens its mouth wide. Hell opens its mouth wide for who is going to swallow. I think a lot of us forget, like, a lot of us forget that. Like narrow is the way. Um, and that's why what scripture tells us, 
Those who listen to prophets will receive a prophet's reward. I used to look at that verse like, what in the world is a prophet's reward? <laughs> What's a prophet's reward? Um, when one is a true prophet of the Lord, they're giving God's word, but they're also being obedient to the Lord. And so when you're obeying the Lord, when you're following his statutes, following in his commandments, uh, the reward is heaven. The reward is his presence. Sorry. But if God sends you someone in your life, God allows you to hear a true prophet, prophetess, who is telling you repent, who is teaching you how to grow stronger in the Lord, who is giving a rebuke, and you're like, man, shut up. <laughs> and you don't listen. You don't get a prophet's reward because you're not being obedient. It's, it's really that simple. Um... And as you get closer to God and you seek his face, he'll let you know who is from him and who is not. And what's sad to me is that, and I was talking to Sister Monique about this. I'm not going to bother Monique. I'd be loving to bother Monique. I'd be loving to drag her on here. Um, what makes me sad is that when you come on a lot of these apps, like TikTok or YouTube, the algorithm typically, typically, most times, will not bring true prophets to you. The algorithm, when you are a new person on this app, will bring all the false prophets, including YouTube. Um, when I, and I was talking, I think we were talking about this last week. Sister Rodrigo and I were talking about this last week when we did our, our joint live. And it was just like, all the people, for the most part, majority of the people you get suggested when you, when you join TikTok Fresh, Christian TikTok is not true ministers. Um, you will get all y'all know. I don't like. I don't want to call names at this moment because so is like it's so it's not like I'm bullying or I'm I'm not a bully. So I don't want to call names. But you get all the false, all the demonized, all the false prophets, all the false teachers, all of them, all the lukewarm, all of them. That's who the algorithm will recommend to you to follow. They will hit you with. Lord, because I, I want to say Larry, Larry Reed, so I will. They will hit you with Larry Reed, Reed so hard, <laughs> so you can follow what I don't know, and they will hide the truth. And it's only by the grace of God that He allows um, true ministers once in a while to the the message to go out. Amen. And it's the same thing with YouTube. I never, in all the years, I was on YouTube. From the minute, ooh, that was me. <laughs> for, for the minute I, I began to use my, my, my platforms on social media for the work of the Lord, I was never recommended Sister Celestial. It never recommended Sister Celestial. It recommended Carrie Ann Giddens. It recommended Mike Todd. It recommended Stephen Furtick. It recommended Creflo Dollar. It recommended Troy Evans. It recommended Marcus Rogers. It recommended The Beat by Alan Parr. It did not recommend Sister Celestial. And I find that quite strange. And I just personally find that quite strange. Because these algorithms be algorithming. So brothers and sisters, pray for, pray for your algorithms. To those of you who are in ministry... Um, and your ministry is like online. God has you evangelizing. Make sure you remember to pray over your pages. Pray over your pages. Now I told you guys before, I don't share every prophecy God gives me. I only share the ones he tells me to give. And I remember this is a personal prophecy for me, but my sister loves to say a prophecy for one is a prophecy for all. So I don't usually always agree, but it is what it is. But basically, um, I was outside doing work and there was a storm. And I remember seeing a dog uh, I don't know if it was my dog or somebody else's dog, but I remember seeing a storm and the storm was trying to blow up my papers. And the crazy thing is that my papers were the documents that I make for the body of Christ. My laptop was there and I was in the middle of writing like a study and the storm just started taking up everything and scat trying to scatter all my papers. So I was grabbing what I could grab. I was grabbing my papers. I was grabbing my laptop, my tablet so that I could continue working. And I remember when I came out of the dream, I was just praying and God was making it clear that I need to pray against any attack, any spiritual attack against um, my computers, um, the storage that I use for everything that the, the, the databases I use pray over my YouTube, my TikTok, my Twitter, 
even though I don't really use my Instagram like that because they be limiting videos. But I was just praying over everything. So I say this to say that we should definitely remember to pray over our pages. I don't really care if the algorithm makes me go viral. I don't want to be viral. <laughs> I told y'all before I don't want to be viral. Um, and so we should just definitely pray over our pages. And I pray over my page so that the enemy will not silence me and ban me from these apps. That's That's really it. Because, um, yeah, if they ban me from TikTok, I'm just going to be on YouTube only. I'm going to make it another TikTok. It's really that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. And so I, I just make sure I plead the blood of Jesus over my page, um, over every page. Uh, because witches are on here. Don't get it twisted, you guys. I, I don't want us to be afraid of anything. I'm rapping at this point, but let me just be going. I don't want us to be afraid of anything. I know there are a lot of people who say, oh, Christians... They fear monger. All these prophets are fear mongering. I can't speak for nobody else um, outside of the people who I know. Um, but those who are really doing the work of God, who are in Christ, we're not fear mongering. We're letting you know, yo, there's a very real enemy. But guess what? There's also a solution to the enemy, right? There are witches. <laughs> there are witches. We're not going to act like witches don't exist. They they make themselves very well known. They You see them all the time. Um, some of them be pretending that they're white witches. Some of them may be pretending that they're prophets. I don't know how they do what they do. But there are many witches. And because we know they're witches, we have to understand there's a solution to witches. Prayer. Righteous living. So that they don't come and try and attack you. We know that people actually project. There are whole people on here. If you click the hashtag Astral Project or you search Astral Project into the search engine, you will see videos of people talking about Astral Project into places. So we're not going to act like Astral Projecting is something that Christians made up to scare people. No, people are able to control their spirit men and take their spirit men to places, including inside some of your homes. They be trying to come into your homes. <laughs> What are we talking about? It's a very real thing. And so we're trying to equip the body of Christ to know like, yo, God is real, right? God is real. God is good. God is also a judge. God is perfect. Meaning when we're talking about perfection, where God is, imperfections can't be. And so God is trying to perfect us through the blood of Jesus Christ, right? But God is also calling for us to live by a standard. Simple as that. God is calling for us. Well, it's not simple. It's hard for many of us. But God is calling us to live by a certain standard. That standard is holiness. That standard is placing him above all things, centering him in our life, making him precedent in our life, and loving others as we love ourselves. And so when you think about what it means to truly love others, um, and we're not talking about carnal love. We're talking about a literal spiritual love. When you love someone, you don't want them to perish. You don't want them to die. You don't want anything bad to happen to them. You tell them the truth, right? Like, you tell them the truth about their lives. You help them. When you have to correct them, your correction is full of truth and not, I hate you. It's, you're doing things the wrong way. Stop what you're doing. This is how you do things the right way, right? So there's a way in which we are even supposed to rebuke. There's a way we're supposed to correct there's a way we're supposed to speak to one another in love when we love one another. This is all under the umbrella of holiness. To be holy as God is holy means to avoid sin. Um, and even the very appearance of sin, scripture says. It also looks like setting no evil thing before your eyes. And so even with brothers and sisters, like I know some brothers who make content for YouTube. And so they'll watch, they'll watch things like there are people who God has called to. Um, to show the evil, right? So they'll watch certain things to show the hand signs and the signs and symbols. But to those of you who were not called to that and you're just feasting on videos from Megan the Stallion, scripture says, I won't even place anything evil before my eyes. And so knowing that, you know, our eyes are a gateway to sin. When you keep watching something that is bad, at some point you go from having a high tolerance a low tolerance for high tolerance for low tolerance for sin sorry meaning you don't tolerate sin too i mean but this show is cool this song is cool so i'm gonna listen to it all of a sudden you start lowering your standards and lowering the barriers 
for one minute you start off with i don't like cussing i hate hearing cussing but then you're watching the show where they're constantly cuss so you start making exceptions that all of a sudden it's okay right it's a very slippery slope and so a part of holiness is just being mindful that what we consume what we what we what we allow what we okay can affect us just keeping being mindful of that if you surround yourself with people who drink and who party and who twerk all the time you'll go from oh i don't do that to it, uh, whatever to oh it's okay i'm not even that pressed to okay maybe i'll do a little sum like it's a very slippery slope it's a gradual thing and so god is calling us out of these mindsets out of the world and when God is telling us to be holy, if we're saying that we love God with all our heart, all of our mind, all of our spirit, then guess what? That means, okay, God, if this is unholy, I'm going to avoid this. You know what I'm saying? I feel as though we complicate what God has simplified for us. We complicate it. And it's not complicated. It's very complex, yes, but it's not complicated. 